Hola, tis I, Alicia. How are ya? Hope all is doing good. Today, we're gonna look into the Fox Sisters. So, the Fox Sisters were three sisters. They're from Rochester, New York. They played an important role in creating the spiritualism movement. Uh, it was Leah, Maggie, and Kate. So, Leah, she took charge of managing Maggie and Kate. Uh, and she managed their careers for some period of time and then they all enjoyed their like success you know um, for many years then in 1888 Maggie confessed that their wrappings there was the I guess wrappings had been a hoax and publicly demonstrated their shady ways um, People were saying, though, that she was mad at her sister Leah, the older sister that was managing them, and other spiritualists for um, chastising Kate, one of the younger sisters, so it was Maggie and Kate were the younger ones, for her drinking and accused her of being unable to care for her two young children. So, sound like she kind of went a little Kanye. Um, Maggie then tried to recant her confession uh, the next year, but their reputation was ruined, and in less than five years, they were all muerto. And uh, that left Maggie and Kate. They passed away in poverty. So, I thought, let's look into the Fox sisters. Were they legit? Um, were they fake? Uh, did they have any regrets over what happened? So, let's look into it. All right. Let's see. Fox sisters, were they legit mediums? All right, let's see what do we have here. Ah. Oh. Okay, so I don't know a lot about the time. I don't know very much about their story beyond what I had uh, read to you. Um, however, what's coming through is, uh, yes, they were legit. Um, it feels like at the time when they were coming out being mediums, it was kind of a scary time. Worried about uh, perception from people, community, all of that kind of... Um, you know, don't want to be kind of burned at the stake kind of things. Um, and it's interesting, like, this this is interesting where Leah, that's the older one, comes up underneath uh, the Fox sisters, like, knowing that she's seen stuff she can't explain and her thinking like, oh my gosh, how can we make money out of this? That's how this is coming up. There's this idea, though, that when they start coming out, that their backs are up against the wall in terms of, it's a hard sell. It's going to be a hard sell to sell this to people, and we have to get them on our side. Um, but we were satisfied with the information that they're bringing through. Um, they're kind of seen as novelties because they're bringing forth messages from people who have passed on um, but then there's this thing here about where we're looking into the future and figuring out, probably more Leah than anything else, um, how can we then further monetize this? How can we further gain fame? How can we, like, where where is this going to go? Let's watch and see what happens. <laughs> like it's a Bravo episode. Um, let's see what happens here to see if we can, you know, take the show on the road make more money okay so they're legit but they have already got someone who's planning their future or looking to see how to plan their future so then why did Maggie confess that they were being fraudsters 
because if she was trying to get back at Leah, who is managing them, and other people who were calling out her sister for being, I guess, a lush, allegedly, uh, why would she out herself? Why wouldn't she just point to Leah and say, Leah's making us do this under duress, and we were always doing this for the best intentions, and she drove my sister to drink. She could have said that. Why didn't she say that? So why is Maggie confessing about saying that they were a hoax? And if you haven't yet, come join me in the Moon Moth Manor. Come to my website, aliciawicker.com. There's a button in the upper right-hand corner. It says, come into the manor. And you can join us for other readings and things I don't share here. This card again. interesting there's a lot of the secrets that were going on behind the scenes and if this is almost as if Maggie um, felt like there was no balance in their life everything spun out of control it was like we're just working 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 um, uh, okay and sometimes they're because there was this, and I think we saw that before when I did that reading on which psychics were legit. I think that was like where I looked in like Sylvia Brown and whoever else. And one of them, and I don't remember who, it was like they're legit. But then after a while, because it was like expected for them to perform on command to get some type of tangible result to prove, things started getting faked. Just because that... Maggie and Kate are in a situation where they, they're like, feels like they're working at a circus and they have to perform every night. And as the, they are being told that they need to perform every night, um, they need to deliver results. Something needs to be tangible for the audience to continue the money-making machine. Um, Leah's acting as the boss over them and Leah likes seeing the money come in. So Leah's forcing them to do this. So in a way, I guess, Maggie was looking to try and put, apparently Maggie couldn't express herself correctly. She didn't necessarily want to destroy their entire credibility. She wanted to out the show. That the show every time was not legit, but it's under duress from Leah. Um there's there's this idea that they were what they were doing they were they felt good about bringing these messages forth but then it became a thing where it became heartbreaking because it wasn't um how they were doing it before it wasn't in the method they wanted to bring it they were not being able to do their their work without having to be able to deliver a product, we'll say product every night or every time they performed. And it was heartbreaking to them because they weren't able to like follow their dreams, the dreams that they had when they set off on sharing their gift with their peoples. Um, and it's interesting because there's a lot of apparently secrets going on in the back end there's a lot of stuff going on in the back end within, like, we have secrets going on at home base, I guess we'll call it. I don't know that they were living together, but within their um, unit of three, there's a lot of secrets going on. All right, let's look then. I'm curious. Let's pull um, three piles. Let's do Leah, Maggie, Kate. What secrets are going on behind the scenes. Leah, Maggie, Kate.
Okay, so Leah. I don't know if Leah's married. Leah's got a relationship going on. Leah's trying to... Leah wants to control all the relationships, all the relationships, not just whatever she's got going on personally, but relationships that her sisters have going on. She wants to be the third wheel in every relationship. Um, Leah's very happy about how their luck has turned around. I don't know if they grew up poor beforehand, but it feels like this was a definite improvement in their lifestyle. And Leah wanted to, you know, control all the money, hold on to it. She was dispersing it. She, this, this feels too, like it wasn't like, okay, our show brought in, um, $6. So you get to, I get to, and you get to, it's, it wasn't evenly split. There was like holding back of monies, depending on what emotional things were going on in their relationship with her. So it was almost like you have to do what I say or you're not getting paid or nope, you sucked at that show. So no money for you. And here's some, there was like, I think a way of trying to pit the two sisters against each other. These Leah or Maggie and Kate. So there's trying to, she's trying to pit them against each other. Um, she starts a lot of the drama here, I guess, because she wants to insert herself in all, every aspect of their lives. She's, dude, it's like she's Joe Jackson. She's like, this is her Fox 2 instead of the Jackson 5. She's trying to... Um, train them like they're animals in a circus and like no 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 let's do it again do it again do it again this has to be flawless it has to be perfect we cannot no 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 we it's they expect this every time you it, they will doubt you if they don't see this every time so it's she's like a colonel tom tom parker kind of energy too of no 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 you can't do it that way you don't know you don't understand i i'm i'm the smart one here uh, you just need to listen to me. And because she's getting rich off of all of this. Wow. So she's like, Ugh. all right. So this is, um, Maggie. Maggie starts seeing shit that's going on behind the scenes with Leah. Maggie starts investigating things. Maggie starts, I don't know if she's looking into contracts, agreements, talking to people that uh, Leah's made agreements with. Like, she's starting to find out some information going on behind the scenes. Like, Leah's doing some shady business. She's getting extra, uh, like, manager fees that are not, like, they're exclusive to her that are not sh being shared with Maggie and Kate. Okay, that's when she decides that she wants to, she's going to protect Maggie and Kate. Maggie decides I'm protecting me and my sister here because Leah's just Colonel Tom Parker over here. And I'm going to be the first line of defense here. Maggie wants to start some new relationships and start taking their stuff separate from Leah. And she wants to go out and do things on her own. But there's like a lot of doors being closed in her face. Like, no, I've already made a deal with Leah. So no, I'm not gonna do a deal with you. Um, it's It reminds me too, I don't know like what circuits are going on, touring circuits and venues and things, but it's almost like it's a closed club. So when Maggie's trying to make the deals, she can't because like words already got around town. It's almost like, uh, you know, when a couple, a high profile couple divorces and the woman's trying to find a, a powerful lawyer for her divorce and she can't because the husband's already talked to all of them. So then the person can't represent them. It's that kind of vibe here. Um, yeah, it's just left out of the cold of these venues. They cannot go into these venues without having Leah with them. And so they're kind of left out of the cold. Then it's keeping them, preventing them from making their own money, um, and being an independent idea here. 
and trying to make a decision of how they could move forward. And I guess that brings us back to why she was making that confession that she wanted to recant later, but it didn't work. Okay, then we have Kate. What's going on with Kate over here? Kate. Kate, I think, is probably the bigger psychic or medium over Maggie. Kate, I think, has the real super gift. She's really good at what she's doing here. So Kate has the gift, but Kate also wants to have the dream life. The husband, the kids, the white picket fence, all of the good stuff, the happiest of happy lives. She wants it all. And she's the one who has like the bigger spiritual gifts. Yeah, she wants this like happy home life. I guess this is why then Maggie's the one that wants to be the bulldog. She wants to protect her. I wonder if she's kind of like more vulnerable. Like besides the fact that she's more in tune, maybe she's more sensitive. She's um, she's not as strong. It feels like she just She's just a not as assertive type person. She's also kind of like a dreamer kind of person. Like I want to have all of it, but more so I just want a happy life and I want to da da da. I don't want to be this performing, uh, you know, lion at the circus every night. Um, And then at some point, Leah becomes so overbearing that she just wants to walk away from it all. She's just had it. It's almost like she doesn't have a show without me, and and I can't handle this. It's like I'm being forced. The, it's like I'm being forced to turn on my gift and use it at some times, but I can't, I can't perform like that, so I'm ready to, like, walk away from this. Hmm. Now I'm curious, did uh, Kate have a problem with drinking? Like, because she can't do her, she can't do her stuff. She can't be a medium in the way that she wants to. It looks like she can't like walk away as easily from Leah as she wants to. So did it drive her to drink? I don't know, let's see. Well, Kate drove to drinking, like those are, what was Kate's uh what was Kate's situation at the time when uh Maggie was making her confession? She started going into some type of isolation. Her world was crumbling. Um, there might have been even pressure from, I don't, her husband. <clears throat> There's pressure from her husband. There's pressure from Leah about just, you know, go out and do the work, do the work, do the work. And yeah, there's problems with her drinking here. Um, it looks like it was pretty bad problems. Um, but she wanted to hide away because she didn't want to be making up the readings, I guess we'll call it. She didn't want to be making up her readings. She didn't, she wanted to get away from that. She didn't want to like fake it. Um, and yeah, the, the drinking's leading to a destruction in her life. And she's over here not being able to say what she wants to say and that's where Maggie comes in and she wants to speak for both of them because she can see this is going terribly wrong okay terribly wrong so I'm curious then What did Leah think about all this when everything went down the tubes? What did Leah, Colonel Parker, Fox, 
think about this when it all went down the tubes. Did Leah have regrets? Jeez. Not so much like it's not regrets. Leah just kind of pissed. Like, I... there's this pissed off that you were not. That if they just went along with it, if they had just gone along with the faking, because you got seven of swords here. If we'd just gone along with faking and just playing it my way, um, everything would have been fine but no they're just like it's so hard to do this and that was the end of it but if they had just gone along i was making them a star or them stars plural i was making them stars they didn't want how i was offering this to them they couldn't see the big vision and i started to notice that at some point they were like going against me and I didn't like it and I was doing everything in my power to help them get going on this but no 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 they just didn't want to do it <sighs> they're just so temperamental it, it's not regret regret it's kind of just like we could have had it all but no let's look at a Maggie Maggie recanted her confession, trying to get back to doing what she and, I guess, Kate enjoyed. What did Maggie have regrets? Maggie had some regrets here for sure. Maggie looks back on it and there was like, I was a, there was a better way to handle it and I just wasn't thinking clearly at the time. Um, but there was definitely a better way to handle it. But at the time I was just like, burn it all down, burn it to the ground, uh, knock it all down. I was going to take control of this situation because it was bigger than um, our gift. And I just thought that, you know, there was a way that we were just going to be able to make it move forward and we could do it in the way that we wanted to do it. Um, and we were going to be able to deliver the readings that we were confident in delivering, the ones that felt good for us to deliver the authentic readings. And it would have been viable source of income. But there's a definite regret here that um, my emotions got the better of me and um, I kind of blew it in the way that I came at it with the confession. I did not see that it was ending everything. Um, so there was a regret. And I think there was some other opportunities that came later, but they were just never as good as it was back when Leah was in charge. All right, let's see about Kate. What regrets did Kate have? Hers are more like she had regrets about Leah. Um, 
she had regrets about like not seeing where Leah wanted to take this. She had like wished that she had clearly looked into the plan, the motivations, the desires of Leah. Um, she also wished that at some point she could have exposed everything Leah was doing behind the scenes with her shady deals and whatnot. Um, kind of a thing here of like, we were going into partnership together and just not having any idea what we were in for. Um, we were not prepared for going on this journey and just, there was no instruction manual on how to do this. And so once it ended, it was like that completed just that chapter and it was sad that it ended. It feels like she just so depressed. So like, and she shut down her, um, her gifts. Um, and then it looks like at some point she thought there might be a way to bring it back again. I don't know if that ties back in there where Maggie was saying that some other deals they tried to do later on, but there was some idea that we could bring back the act sans Maggie. Um, but it was always like a wait and see kind of thing. Things just never panned out. And she always wanted to let it be known that she was being truthful, authentic about her gift but she doesn't think that that ever really got out there. It was kind of like the damage was done. So then what did Kate think about Maggie doing this? Because Maggie's trying to, you know, protect her in a way. So what did Kate think about Maggie blowing it up in a way? Okay. So she said from one part of this, um, Maggie was trying to find, um, a fairness in our, uh, Fox sisters group. She was trying to find a fairness for our Fox sisters group so that everybody could enjoy the fruits of our collective labor. Um, however, with Maggie coming out and trying to pin this that she's my defender and trying to do all this for me, that's not quite true. Maggie's dealing with her own shit and she doesn't want to own it and she hates it just as much as I do, but she doesn't want to bring it up because she has secrets in her closet that she doesn't want to talk about. So she made me the person that we're going to focus all the energy on, but it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. Maggie had her own issues and Maggie was just, you know, not wanting to address those, but it, she felt it was fine to bring me up and use that as her motivation. Um, and at the time I was not looking to, I didn't know which way it was going to go. So I just said, okay, go ahead wasn't thinking with a clear mind. I was vacillating. One day I'd be clear and the next day I wasn't. Um, the alcohol does that. So I was kind of like, I wasn't, um, wasn't in a position to have a say either way. Um, but I understood her main motivation. If I, if I take away all of her drama and stuff, her main motivations for us to get away from Leah and our controlling ways. And she did achieve that, but it was like doing all of this and then losing it all. 
that's like we never got the offers that we were supposed to because she just kind of blew up the whole thing and we spent our life just holding on to breadcrumbs it feels like maybe they were doing some type of private readings here or there but it wasn't really enough to pay the bills um yeah it was just it was like trying to get someone would throw us a breadcrumb and we would be like the novelty at a party or something here and there but it just wasn't enough and she blew it all up <sighs> wow okay so that's a sad ending to the fox sisters um hmm. all right well there we have it fox sisters reading tell me what you think down in the comments below i'm curious to hear what you got thinking up in that little noggin of yours about the fox sisters and with that i'm gonna wish you a wonderful rest of your day adios